Hi. Where are you? Are you still in the same place? In Venice? Am I, I'm still in the same place, yeah. Yeah. Your, uh, your beat is a little bit choppy. Oh, it is? Yeah, do you have, uh, are you on wireless? Um, yeah, I am. Uh, if there's, um, like an Ethernet cord nearby, you could plug it in and then it'll be clear, but it's up to you. If you're, like, at a desk near the router, but. Is this better? Yeah. It is? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So what's been going on? <laughs> A lot's been going on, as I'm sure you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I just want to tell you that there's this girl, um, her name's Alana Foy, and she's doing kind of a similar thing, intimate conversation kind of thing, and um, I was one of her first conversations for the show, and I talked about you, like, the whole time. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he won't care that I'm talking about him. She's like, Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm an open book. I'm good. I know you are. <laughs> I was like, I could probably tell him that the whole time I just sat there and talked crap about him, and he'd be like, that's your thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Which pretty much sums up um, our dynamic over, I feel like, the last month or so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to see you, like, Reemerging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Um, yeah, I feel like it, it's been. It's. I mean, I, I feel like my soul has really been calling me to literally let go of everything, you know. Uh -huh. And um, you know, fortunately, we are moving through things and processing things a lot quicker than the past, um, yeah. but I definitely needed time to feel like I just had to just let go of it, all of it, you know, and just kind of, because I would, st I think on some level I, I start to do that, and then the second I start re-emerging again, because it might not be like fully integrated, you know, into my body, and, but I, th I on some level think that it is. Um, yeah. I'm still, like, I'm almost, I almost end up interrupting the process. And even in our conversation right now, I, I, I feel like I have the awareness that I can easily lead myself back into old habits, um, but mm -hmm. that I am being very aware and very, like, delicate <laughs> with myself and everything that comes out of my mouth because I'm also starting to see... Like, you know, we're told how powerful our words are, our thoughts are, and what we put out there, but it's feeling extra, extra sensitive today. So, um, yeah. yeah, so thanks for being available to talk to me. Oh, my pleasure. You know, it's been, uh, like, this crazy... The last few days have been interesting on my end as well. Like, it's like... The whole world is like, yeah, everything is just like on pause, basically. And so, like, it's in those moments that we get to really feel and become present to the things that we're still holding on to that we didn't even know that we were holding on to. Yes. So, like, it's like, let go of everything. Okay, I just did. Um, no, you didn't. <laughs> Fun hold. And then. <laughs> Now what else are you holding on to? Oh, yeah. I know. You're going <laughs> to... This is what I talked about today, too, with Alana that I'll share with you. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's crazy. I mean, 
And it's, what amazes me is I'm thinking, wow, what else am I holding on to? <laughs> you know, like what yeah. else is kind of in a way running my every choice that I make? Because what I realized that you, you, Paul, <laughs> 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 that you have um, triggered in me was took me back to a situation. I kept being like, why am I freaking acting like a 14-year-old girl? I, I, that's all I kept saying. I feel like I'm 14. So I finally was like, what happened when I was 14? And as soon as I asked that, I could feel the situation. I mean, it was literally the same situation, but obviously different costumes and different characters sure. um, and that from that moment of when I experienced something that was actually very painful for me at 14 years old um, mm -hmm. it has it has been like a template for me it has basically been running every choice I make in every relationship that I've ever had and has been on some level like running me you know mm -hmm. and so I've been like it was one thing to just acknowledge it, but then it's another thing to actually do what I need to do to to clear it and to bring light to it and all of isn't that. It, so isn't it crazy when we come become present to one of those filters that we just had no idea was there, and we were like up until the moment you become present to it, you're just like, well, that's just part of who I am. Yeah, and it's just me. And, yeah, and. Like, we don't become present to it. We're not present to it. We're not present to it. And then one day, it just, like, like it's, it's when we actually act out, like, and express ourselves through that template that we're able to see ourselves in our actions mm -hmm. because we don't even have conscious access to that template. It's buried so deep. And then when we finally see it in our actions, then we, like, can become present to it. And it's like, oh, shit. Like... Mm -hmm. And then the whole, like, cascade of realizations comes in, and that's what gives you, like, what you need to get the template out of the way and then, like, start expressing yourself again without it to see what the difference is. And it is, I mean, even just for the moment of experiencing that release is just, like, you feel, it's almost like, I've held it there as a way to not be responsible mm -hmm. because as soon as I felt or it's like what you said or as a way to compel the world to pry me open because as soon as even if for a moment the experience of not having that holding me and to mm -hmm. like feel that and to go whoa I've been living any other way I've even though I feel like I've been meeting people with my heart open and this and I on a lot of levels I do have my heart yeah. open but the moment I think my heart is open it just means that it it needs to open more it's ready to open more right. and so I was just just that moment of feeling that empty that freedom it's like literally clear space to where I had nothing to blame it on not to, nothing to throw it on nothing to like stuff it into a nice little package into I mean nothing just clear space, and I was like, oh, well, now what do I do with my life? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, okay, just because this is, you know, for audience pleasure, I want to just share a little, I just want to kind of go through our history together yeah. and how we met and how we have ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> So Paul and I met um, in college. We had nutrition class together, and we were study partners, a.k.a. let's go and drink tequila partners <laughs> <laughs> and pretend we're studying. But hey, really, that was we after I all... spent half of the semester sneaking from the back of the class, <laughs> like inching my way forward to finally sitting by you on the, in the very front of the class. Yes. Yeah, so then we we had like the rest of the half of the semester to, to um, connect and we actually we got decent grades in the class yeah, surprisingly. We did. <laughs> so um but yeah, we were already kind of like I remember talking about books we were reading like A New Earth and I I was really like, wow, this is awesome to 
talk to a guy especially or actually at that point even talk to anybody that was even somewhat you know stepping into this path of living authentically you know so yeah. we basically I think we kind of had lost touch for a few months and then uh, we both decided to go to Bali for a transformational journey and had pretty profound experience in Bali and then we've just been close since like just you were living we were living in separate states but you know we were supporting each other however we could just on the phone or Facebook or whatever and just staying in touch and um, and then I've always just felt like you were gonna move to LA so that was something that I was constantly like pushing you towards <laughs> so then you come to LA and let me think what's happened <laughs> that's where it starts to get really dirty like it's all really cute and sweet yeah. <laughs> up until we're actually facing each other on a daily basis so basically um, I was in a situation where I didn't have somewhere to live I ended my lease and I I now that I think about it I'm like what was I I had no idea where I was gonna go none and I knew I had two weeks before I was coming home to Colorado to visit and Paul just doo -doo -doo, shows right up and is like oh you can stay with me I mean it was just kind of amazing how that worked out so he generously him and his girlfriend or partner um, were so so generous in allowing me to stay and I was telling Alana too I said I know that the moment Paul invited me to stay with him, he knew exactly <laughs> what he was getting into. And I'm like, oh wow, this is so amazing. I, you know, <laughs> I have a nice place to stay, my own room, my nice bed. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I know too, that whole time you were like, here we go. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so basically it was it, it wasn't like it was hell or anything it's just um, if there's anybody to face <laughs> um, that isn't going to allow even just a tiny speckle of your own shit to be projected onto him <laughs> or to anything <laughs> else yeah um, he's the person to go stay with or just spend some time with <laughs> and so I think on some level my soul has really been asking me to take it to the next level of um, responsibility for my own life and um, we I would say like the last I don't even you could probably help me out with what was what your perspective of all of it was but basically the last week we were last few days that we were living together was really intense for me I mean I did I felt like that 14 year old girl um, I felt like I was reacting very emotionally um, I was getting upset I was being triggered by things that like really triggered like I yelled at him one night and told him to F off probably more times than I can count <laughs> Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I know I seem very sweet, <laughs> but <laughs> um, so then like when I left there went to come back to Colorado there was obviously things that were incomplete within myself and I felt like incomplete between you and I but then well, we I think that it's probably important to mention that like it was you know, a couple nights before you left that, you know, you had your one of your best friends over and we had dinner mm -hmm. and we had that really, um, like, kind of, like, heated re uh, interaction where, um, like, I had to just be, like, really direct and really pointed and in the midst of it, I was, like, yelling at you and telling you, like, I hate yelling at you because I love you, Andrea, but <laughs> you have to listen to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, and... Lauren and, I mean, and they were holding the space and like and then that kind of left us incomplete and then you went home mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to mention in that conversation um, that what Paul was 
driving home to me that was very, very, very painful for me to accept um, was that I've I've been holding on to something um, and on a lot of levels like a lot of times situations will happen to us and we can forgive the situation on the surface and the people that were involved but that doesn't mean that like the core root of what even created that situation or ha um, attracted that situation to even happen might not have been fully pulled so just because we're like you know swiping the weed on the surface it's going to keep showing up and showing up and showing up until it's pulled and really what it came down to was um, being a victim to actually I guess overall it comes down to like being a victim of my body um, now that I like sit with it really is um, yeah victimizing myself and Paul and it's a very like you know touchy situation and there aren't many men that could really come, well <laughs> I it took it has taken me a long time to process and accept what was actually happening but um, Paul was basically right there to be like it doesn't matter what ha things don't happen to you you know um, and basically being a mirror for showing me how I've been a victim to this situation and how it's continues to play out and like I said all of my relationships so it's pretty yeah. pretty intense and stuff and then you went and then you went home which is like super intense as well like home is like going you know back into the like dragon's den you know like when it comes to like personal development and especially to go in there like you know kind of raw and open from you know the, the interaction we just had and like I remember hugging you goodbye and like wishing you luck and 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 I mean I admire how like your courage doing that because um, yeah and that's really where where you get your metal tested is at home <laughs> mm -hmm. very much so especially being in my old room that I grew up in and right yeah mm hmm yeah it's been and it's been awesome too because I do I am very aware of what's happening like I, I'm watching it all go down so really the last few days like five seven, five days a week um, has been about processing the emotions around things that I still you know I just I haven't let go of um, and it's not to be hard on ourselves about it it's just that this is just another layer of the onion into getting to the core and operating from our core more fully and freely and so I'm in another layer of that onion of peeling away <laughs> um, so yeah but then we even we got together and yeah I had been I felt like again it's like goes back to the integration process which is so important when things get brought up and they come up um, again we can deal with it by like just you know slicing it on some in some ways dealing with it but if we haven't fully allowed it to um, I don't know how you would describe it I, I integrate is the only way I can really think but if we it's almost like we want to fix things or for me it's like I, I just want it to be fixed and so I will to a certain level and then I as soon as I start feeling good again or feeling better or feeling like I've um, remembered or whatever it's like it's almost like I just let it go I think oh I must have yeah it's gone that. I forgot it's all, it's all taken care of mm -hmm. it goes back up again yeah so that's what happened so when we got together I was in that place of like oh well I'm feeling better and we're all good me and we're, we're great uh, and then um, and then you leave and then it's like it just came into my face even more intensely like big time 
<laughs> it was like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the process quickens too, you know, so it's no longer like years or months, it's days or hours now. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, over the last week, I have literally felt like I would never talk to you again. I, I've been, I have felt so angry at you. I felt and that. And like I've hated, like literally felt like I hated you and that you were just this horrible friend <laughs> and that I didn't want to have anything to do with you. Nothing. I was like, I'm just going to be done with him. And, and the thing is, is that um, I... That's a pattern of mine, especially when it comes to men. And this is a lot of why I'm, I'm doing The Limitless Man is because as soon as a guy, especially men, especially <laughs> as soon as you guys show up in a way that I don't think you should or that I feel like doesn't, whatever is going on in my head, I will just make you the bad guy mm -hmm. and make you guys evil and run. And never, and never ever really deal with it. So I got the message actually a couple days ago that I obviously wasn't just going to let you go. <laughs> well, that even if I wanted to, then I don't know if I could have. <laughs> even if I tried, I had my saw like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that I knew that we would be having a conversation and that this isn't something that I can run from anymore. So here we are. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting because <clears throat> this same conversation has actually been coming up, you know, with me and, and the work that I'm doing right now. Um, and that doesn't surprise me because we're always, like, on such parallel, like, planes. And the way I've been describing it is, like, the closer and closer we get to our core, the more the more we just assume that those filters are a part of who we are. And the more we protect them and the harder it is to see them. And what happens is like we have these filters that we might have that we don't even really think of as thoughts. We just think of them as part of who we are. And so like we sense a vibration within us and then it goes through this filter and that filter creates emotion and then we feel the emotion and the emotion makes us act. And so we just assume that, oh, that's what I'm feeling, and that's part of who I am. And it's like we have, like, learning to, to sense the story or the filter that's actually creating the emotion and learning to look at that and learning to just shine our awareness on it, not to look at it with any judgment, but just to shine our awareness on it so that it can actually just shift itself into a place that's healthy and that actually works with us instead of a place that's, that's uh, sab it's like sabotaging us unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of distinguish between an emotion and a feeling? Because really, if, does a feeling even have labels, or is it only the labels that our mind puts on them, really? Well, like, okay, so at our, like, our hearts have the ability to, like, they, we have our heart field, right? The energy, like the field that our part, heart put out. And so we can pick up feelings from other people. And we can also, like our hearts, like also generate feelings. Like when we like have a genuine feeling or an inspira or inspiration or whatever. So we're generating our own and we're picking up other people's. Mm. But our bodies and we experience feelings after it passed through like our energetic heart center and after it's gone through the filters and when a feeling has been gener like an emotion has been attached to those to the to that energy or that frequency as it flows out of us it goes through the filter and emotion gets attached to it and that emotion gives us sensation in our bodies and like lets us feel and that's what moves us mm -hmm. and so what happens is, is like those filters, like we can pick up, we can perceive other people's feelings. Our hearts have the power to turn any feeling that we get from the outside or any feeling that wells up within us. We have the power to turn it into joy or love before we push it out through our bodies. Hmm. 
And so we, so what you're feeling, like as 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 a matter of like what your body is feeling and what you're going through when it comes to emotions, is a choice. Now, what you perceive, like what you feel, like in the mm -hmm. sense of like what I yeah. feel around me or what I am perceiving, that's different than what your emotions are, than what emotions are flowing through your body. And like I can feel something negative around me, but that doesn't mean that I'm in a negative feeling, mm -hmm. a negative emotional state. Mm -hmm. And I can actually take that feeling and run it through my own heart and turn it into joy and then my body is still experiencing something pleasant mm. even in the face of something unpleasant. So so that's interesting because like I said with the situation that has happened over like the last week or so but with you and I that nothing even I mean I guess things happened but it's funny cuz when I really look back on it like nothing even really happened. I just it's amazing what I can create out of from the feeling but when yeah. I went back to being 14 mm -hmm. um, and remembering the feeling and the way I related to the feeling and I was able to apply it to the situation even though logically in my mind I literally sat there and said this makes absolutely no sense at all. Whoa. Like my mind could actually sit there and say, Andrea, you know better. Like this, and I could even like map out the things that happened and go and see clearly that it did not at all apply to what I felt when I w or what I thought even happened when I was fourteen. Um, but somehow I was able. But it's like that didn't matter. Like I can logically think about it all day long but when we have a feeling come up that we've related to or applied meaning to in a certain way for so long it's like it's it was lit, it was hard to separate myself from being that 14 yeah. year old girl well what's interesting and it brings up an interesting conversation is is like there's this conversation that I hear it keeps happening like quite frequently it's like listen to your body trust your body mm -hmm. like listen to what your body tells you and that's how we learn that's how we learn to like perceive the world and that's fine to an extent because what it does is it brings your spirit and your body into line with one another so that you can start to be spirit driven and when your body's in a state of ease then you can be easily spirit driven mm -hmm. but as soon as your body shuts and in, switches into fear and when it does that, it's running on the animal part of the brain, like the, the lizard part of the brain in the scent, like the brain stem, which we don't have con conscious access to. Mm -hmm. So it's running on that when it switches into fear, and spirit doesn't get to, and then the body's like running separate from being spirit driven. And so once you bring them up in, enough into alignment, then spirit, and you start identifying with, with spirit or your higher self, then your body actually, then you kind of go to a place where you stop listening to your body because your because spirit is going to start reprogramming your body to move with it, in even in in the face of fear. Mm. And so, that's when you start having to choose how you feel, and then you can perceive things and work with them before they even start affecting your body. And then even so, like when you perceive something that might be have been danger or fear before, you like run it through your heart and then give your body a different story to tell like you program mm -hmm. a new template in because what happened is like your animal brain created a story that didn't make sense in response to a situation that was painful and disorienting when you were 14 it created a story that didn't make sense but it worked for you when you were 14 so you stuck with it mm -hmm. and then it got submitted to habit and got moved to a part of your brain that's completely out of your conscious awareness so you can't even find that within you until you see yourself act it out Mm. And identify it, and then you can actually tap back into it in your, with your consciousness and and start to reprogram it. But you have to go. You have to have moved to a place where you're willing to act from your intuition, and just and even if your actions are like what you would later consider like unskillful behavior, you need to see yourself do it in order to even identify it, so that you can shed light on it, and then your body, and then your spirit can like make the necessary changes. Wow, that's amazing. I just recorded a video on, it's it's kind of, it goes into the conversation, it takes that conversation of using our head versus our heart into a whole nother level because it's not just this thing where it's like, oh yeah, you know, um, 
you don't use your heart and this is what it feels looks like when you're using your heart and this is what it looks like when you're using your brain it's like again we can read about that all day long and hear about it but when we have those stem things that are running us that we haven't even brought awareness to it's almost like the way I described it was like bringing us closer to ourselves really is what it, it comes is. To it's really it is it's moving closer and closer and closer to the truth of who you are which all of that stuff stands in the way still all those old programs that we put in place and it takes like having enough faith to just act out and see ourselves act yes. out so we can see, oh, that's how I behave in that situation. Because we can conceptualize what we would do in that situation, and then all of a sudden we're yes. in it, and we do something completely different. Totally. So we have to see ourselves act out. And so mm -hmm. to, like, the, what happens is, like, if you've got a lot of fear of judgment or a lot of, like, need to be right, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just reserve ourselves and not act, and we're, like, processing our emotions internally, which doesn't help you because you're actually you can't see what you're trying to get to if you look at it that way so you actually have to just go with like the emotion that arises act from it watch yourself do it yes and then own the fact that you did it and then trace and then follow that template back in to find it and then you can like shine light on it and let it go that's so true, and that's something that I also mentioned too, is that in the spiritual community or whatever, we get into that space of, oh, we're in the flow, and we just go with life. And, and I think what happens is we end up not actually letting ourselves choose. <laughs> Even if we ch do choose the wrong reaction or the wrong whatever, yeah. you know, um, just in the space of just allowing ourselves to choose or to react or to watch ourselves just play something out is actually saying to our bodies that I trust you, you know, exactly. I trust you that even in making this choice that might not appear right or whatever it is, whatever is calling forth for you to see, I trust that you're going to see what you need to see from it. Right. And that's how your body feels honored actually is if when you, when you develop like a trust relationship between your body and your spirit that's when you can actually really start to be like an empowered creative being that's like inspired and like can change the world because otherwise if uh, you can know all you can have like all the heady information you want if you don't ever put yourself in situations where you don't know how you're going to behave and like like just see what happens then you're always going to be living in a box oh my gosh yeah it's like we've been trying to we've had this idea of perfection that isn't even real like there's no, no not, there's no there's nothing there's absolutely there's no reality to it none right people to, like human beings to aren't we don't live in absolutes there's no like we make all these like we conceptualize things in absolutes and the absolutes are actually the only things that don't exist everything in between like kind of is a possibility but the absolutes themselves aren't a reality for humans Mm. but we use those to like draw the lines it's kind of like in our minds we draw the lines like the walls of a room you don't use the walls themselves you use the space in between them <laughs> and that's what like thoughts and conceptualizations are like mm. Yeah, and I started noticing when I was using never, like, I'm never going to talk to Paul again, and or like, he always, or those started, I thought it's funny that you bring that up, because those started becoming words in my mind that were almost like red flags of... Right, yeah, anytime that, you're saying that, you're just, you're like, heading yourself to, you're like, setting yourself up to have your expectations broken, so any nevers or always or quit, or like, full stops or like any of that stuff doesn't really work it's all about balance and equilibrium and like our relationship might move you know the equilibrium might be you know to where we're a little farther from each other for a minute and then we're a little closer to each other mm -hmm. but it's never going to be a never situation or an always situation mm -hmm. true <laughs> darn it no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck <laughs> We're in this together, baby. 
Oh, I am grateful. I was telling in my conversation today, too, I was like, if there was anybody that could show up this way for me, it was Paul. Like, you couldn't be the more perfect person for me. And it only, I mean, I'm so grateful because, and you know, we're, we're, I'm in this journey forever, but right. it has, like, if you weren't willing, on some level, I like, I've been wanting to hate you. Um, and actually, I think I even said that to someone. She's like, Andrea, if you even think that, that only you can only hate someone if you actually really, really love them. Like, right. you must really love him. I was like, no, you're crazy. I don't love him. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> but like, in a, you did. You you stood for me. Like you you didn't stand for my bullshit and my limitations, and you stood for what you know and see in me, which is yeah. beyond limitations, which is limitless. Right. I I see your perfection, and then I see also like the the where I see parts of you that you don't even see yourself, and I'm going to stand for those parts. Because the parts of you that you see yourself, you can stand for just fine. I don't need to help you stand for those. That's so true. So talk to me because you, I haven't talked to you in like a week or two. I know. Uh, well, not really, just on Facebook. Well, that was like four or five days ago, and I like gave you another really pointed message, and then I didn't hear from you. Yeah, I don't even remember. What did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I it was basically remember. the conversation we just had. I was like, I am your friend. That's why I'm not putting up with your shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're not being my friend. You don't have my back. A real friend would. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> um, but so last I saw, you were you opened yourself up for taking clients, and this is something new, right? That you're. Yeah, it's uh. It's definitely new for me. It was a big step because, um, like, I've been working with people. Like, I've just been like letting Source guide me and and follow my intuition and my heart to, and just uh, cultivating like my skill without the pursuit of money being a factor. So I just like let go of any pursuit of money and just put myself completely at the mercy of you know spirit to just like support me and hold me up. And it's been interesting how amazing like that's happened um, but I realized that at some point like I realized I kinda clicked and I saw how my whole life I'd been preparing for this as well even though I didn't really know it and so when all of that like, like everything I'd learned so far without even really being cognitive uh, conscious of it and the stuff that I'd learned over the last year when all of that clicked and lined up like I was able to see kind of how powerful like what my ability to see is and how like and what that's like and so I did open myself up for clients because um, and 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 also like asking for money in return for what I do because for all practical purposes it's necessary like in in the situation with you if I had if you hadn't been staying in my apartment and been kind of dependent on me for those like for that week we couldn't have gotten there because of how difficult that was mm -hmm. and so what I realized is like I can't go the rest of my life like helping people by like moving them into my apartment <laughs> <laughs> I did bring up that idea though well yeah so like I might make that an available option <laughs> like, and I actually probably will make that an available option. Yeah. I have three, three different modalities now that yeah. I've got set up. But um, and one's a month long and like 11 sessions. One's three months and 33 sessions or 11 weeks and 33 sessions. And then one would be like seven days, like full contact, like immersion, which would be oh, kind of Oh, I love that. And that. That I'm going to call an ego death match. Yeah, I remember that now. So share, I want you to just share too a little about what you actually do because this is, this isn't for, um, hmm, how do I put this? <laughs> Your soul will know. And even though Paul and I have been journeying together and I've really seen him as like a companion on my path, I didn't think in any way that he was, especially when I moved in with you, it's like, 
I didn't even, my mind didn't process at all that you would actually be facilitating a process for me because I just had always viewed our relationship as just, yeah, just like companions, friends, we support each other. And I never in my right mind would have thought that our dynamic was going to shift for that time and some way you being um, a facilitator. And I don't even necessarily look at you as someone that's like, you know, I am the guru and I have your answers. You just really do have this presence and this this ability to see through, like you said, especially to the parts of yourself that we're not seeing. And so this, this really is um, a soul knowing, like your soul does know. It's not something that you can really make sense of. And it really is for people who are, it seems to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but those who are really, really, really ready to step into the next level, a big level of responsibility for themselves. And um, like for me, it's, it's, it really is, it's powerful to see what you've been able, and even as friends, like for you to without making a ruckus about it or needing to place yourself above me or be something for me. It was like you were just there and you were just present and you just like showed up as Paul. And it in that process was like, you know, bringing up a lot of stuff that I really wanted to throw on you or like blame you. And which is what I've been doing for a lot of my life is throwing my stuff on people and blaming other people and they took it. <laughs> But, right. but Paul doesn't take it. So just kind of describe, because you have obviously a whole nother perspective of, like, because you described it to me when we got together for coffee as, like, pulling the root out. Well, yeah, like, what I, and, I mean, well, to speak to what you said about who it's for, and, like, I'm probably, I'll just say I'm the last coach that, like, people should come to. Like, if you've looked everywhere <laughs> else and, you still like they're still like you're like doing mantras every day and you're still yeah. having to like, conjure up your sense of joy and you just aren't finding answers. You've looked everywhere. Come to me and I'll help you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna and yeah, it takes a lot of commitment and so um, you know financial commitment, time commitment, um, and you know commitment to the process. But um, yeah, it is. It's what I, like I'm able to. Usually what people do is they balance their energy by projecting themselves out onto a number of people, places, things around them. And so what I do is I, like, I become basically the canvas for them to project all of it onto. <laughs> and so I just, like, don't yeah. let First, I start by not letting I'm them... I'm laughing now. Out. You won't be laughing, believe me. I start by, like getting them not to project it onto everything else. And then so they project it all onto me. And so once they've projected everything onto me, then I, like, show them the picture that they're projecting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's, like, met with resistance. So, like, then they'll get mad at me, and then I just, like, let them run at me, like, metaphorically speaking, and then they have to smash through their own projection and see themselves. And so it's not necessarily the most present pleasant process like through the whole thing, but it like most of the work I do is in the areas it's like subconscious around you. And so like w the aware part of you just saw me as a friend and just the person chatting with you and whatever. But like at the edges of your awareness and in the unconscious part of you, I'm compelling that part of you to like wake up and start stepping forward. Mm -hmm. And when like it, when it's done properly it happens so powerfully that there's no stopping it and like and you just have to like emerge like as like a much bigger much brighter much like more whole version of yourself um, because there's no you don't feel like there's any other choice and and so that's the process I like take people through yeah, and the beautiful and amazing part about it is that it and through the whole thing it has nothing to do with you where no, I think a lot of coaches, it, it, they make it on, in some way feel like it's about them and their amazing gifts and this and that. And yes, you clearly have this gift that is seen, um, but you don't leave your presence feeling like 
you owe you so like I owe you something or that they no, owe you. I don't like to take credit for any of it because it's not really me. It's like I'm I see myself as like I'm just in such a surrendered state that whatever is wanting to happen for you like can happen in this space that I will like provide but I, it's not me and I don't have any special skills or any special knowledge necessarily and the only way that I'm able to describe the process that people go through with me is because I've observed that process happening it's not because I do the process necessarily mm -hmm. And you've I, observed it within yourself first. Right. And so I can take people as far as I've taken myself. And I've, mm -hmm. like, I've been through, like, an amazing life journey and an amazing process. It gives me a very unique perspective or line of sight into someone's, like, heart. And so I can see the whole person that the individual I'm looking at can't even see. Mm -hmm. And I can call that person forward. And, and, uh... And it's beautiful to see it happen, and so I look forward to working with with uh, with more people. Yeah, I'm excited too to see how this all. I, I feel like I get to be a part of witnessing it as well from afar. Yeah, absolutely, and my... and it's nice because the way I have it set up, I have like it's like three sessions a week um, with people, and so it's not unless they do the an immersion, but with three sessions a week, it's not as intense as like what you went through, and it's not like we can move through it at, at like a more manageable pace, and and they, like, their whole life doesn't have to go on hold. <laughs> Very true. Very true. So if they want more information, they should email you. Yeah, email me at uh, Cooper at HybridTruth.com. So C O O P E R at hybridtruth.com or message me on Facebook. Okay, and I'll leave both of those links at the bottom of this video. And I want to say too, I actually, I mean I've gone to your blog before, but I actually went to your blog and started reading things today. And you talk about, you know, not having not really necessarily a lot of knowledge, but the, what I was reading truly felt like this isn't Paul knowledge. Like this this is knowledge that is beyond me. Like, well, I just write that stuff, and I write it, and then I hit post, and then I like don't even know what I wrote after I write it. I was seriously blown away, Paul. Like, truly, I. And the, the amazing part about it was, as I was reading it, um, and you know, as I'm just starting to feel my body more, um, it just resonated. It's just, it's like. Um, like I said, it's knowledge, but it's not mind knowledge. It's not Paul the human knowledge. It's like, uh -huh. dang, whatever's moving through him. So I would also encourage you guys to go check out his blog because that first one that you have posted where you had all the words listed. Oh, like staring down the sun? Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, that was one that I did. I've got actually more of that that I'm going to post, but I ended up, after I did the 22-day water fast, um, I said that prayer that's the first verse of, of what I wrote and then I sat and wrote for six hours just with a pen and paper like just nonstop and all of that information just poured out and so I typed it up and, and I posted it. I have a little bit more that I'm going to post as well. Amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's some powerful stuff there. Like it took me a while to get my head around it as well. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to head on my way. All right. But yeah. This was an awesome conversation. I love you so much, Andrea. I love you too. <laughs> and I actually mean it. I hate you. I hate you and I love you. <laughs> Perfect. If you tell me you hate me, that just means I know that I know that you love me somewhere. So <laughs> there's no getting around it. And yeah, I'll, I can stop putting my efforts towards trying to cut you out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well cut out your own heart. I'm blessed. I love you. I love you Talk too. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.